Okay, Tanya, we're on Perak Lamed Hey. We finished Lamed Dalit last time. It's on page 86 on top, 156 at the bottom. Okay, in the previous chapters of Tanya, Daltrebo is discussing in Perak, uh, the previous, before Lamed Hey, Daltrebo was discussing. Um, That the concept of that it's very close and easy to serve Hashem uh, in thought, speech, and action. And it says, is very close in your mouth, in your heart, meaning thought, to do. And now the Rebbe was explaining how it's easy. In the first, until chapter Yudzayan, Dr. Rebbe is explaining how you have to awaken this open, revealed love of Hashem. And then when you open up the revealed love of Hashem, so then it's going to stimulate you to think, you know, speech, thought, speech, and action. Then he says in Perak Zion, he starts the shorter way, you get ches, he starts the shorter way. And he says it's enough to awaken the natural, instinctive love that a person has by nature because they're born with it to be able to stimulate it to awaken enough of a love to do mitzvahs and thought, speech, and action. And then the Altareb explained why you need simcha because simcha helps. And if you're depressed, it's not going to happen and so on. In Paraklam and Hey, the Altareb is explaining now what does it mean the word la say say <clears throat> to do. Okay, so let's see this insight. It's a very fundamental parak. Vine, the taste is beer. To add an additional explanation. Tevis la say say the word. La say say in the process, not only in your mouth and your heart, but the actual to do. The gam, lahov, and now he goes into a totally different question. Lahov and mat to understand a little bit. Tachlis brias habeninim. What is the purpose of the Bainani? We read this Nishme Seyam and the descent of their Nishama, La Ola Mazah, into this world, Lislabesh, Benefesh Abamesh, and Makrip of Sitrach. Okay, let me, I'm going to speak, this, I'm going to explain this orally first and then we'll see it inside. We learned before that Tzaddik is one that killed the Yetzirah. If he only killed the Yetzirah, he's an incomplete Sadi. If he transformed the evil to good, he's called Sadi Gomor, complete Sadi. <clears throat> then you have the guy called the Bainani. The Bainani, Dr. Rebbe says, is a guy that doesn't sin not once in thought, speech, or action. Because once you sin, you're a Russian. He says, what's a Bainani? A Benini is a guy who has a Nefesh Shabbamis. He has a Yetzirah. Therefore, he's essentially closer to the Rasha than he is to the Tzaddik because the Tzaddik has no Yetzirah. The Benini and the Rasha do. The difference between the Benini and the Rasha <clears throat> is the Rasha sins and the Benini doesn't. But level-wise, the tzaddik has no Yetzirah and Nefesh Shabbamis. He kills it. And the Benini does. So when it says, even if everybody tells you you're a tzaddik, you should be in your own eyes, Kirosha, that the Rebbe explained before in Tanya, Kirosha means a Benini. Because the Benini is in essence like the Russia because he has an evil inclination. But he doesn't give in to it. So, and he says not only that, the Benini cannot become a tzaddik. You have to be born with the ability to be a tzaddik. And not every tzaddik. You should try. If you try hard enough, Hashem will give you a tzaddik and the Hashem of another tzaddik within you. But the bottom line is, you can't necessarily become a tzaddik. A Benini, every person could be, should be, is able to be, and so on. So basically, there's two aspects. Now, the Rebbe explained before in Tanya, so what's the purpose of the Benini? 
What's the purpose of a bainini? So he says the purpose of a bainini is to struggle. And he explains there's two types of delicacies. Like Rivka said to Yaakov, or Yitzchok said to Esav, I say, Limat Amim, I want you to make delicacies for me. Wait, in order to get the brachas that Yaakov took away from Esav. Why did Yaakov, Yitzchok need delicacies, plural? What, if one delicacy is not enough? So the Rebbe explains, it is Hashem talking to the Jewish people. Hashem says to the Jewish people, I say, Limat Amim, I want you to make me delicacies. There's two types of delicacies. There's a sweet delicacy that's enjoyable. And then there's a bitter, sour type of delicacy. People like sour foods, sharp foods. No, rather, you let's use the word sharp foods. People enjoy sharp foods. It's a delicacy. And not only that, Dr. Rebbe says, there's an advantage of the sharp delicacies over the sweet delicacies. Meaning, if somebody, God forbid, faints, you're not going to give them sugar to smell. You're going to give them something sharp to smell, and then they will hopefully uh, become revived. So not only is there a bitter, a sharp delicacy and a sweet delicacy, but there's an advantage in a sharp, delica sharp delicacy over a sweet delicacy. But I'll never explain before, the fight and the battle of the Bainani is the sharp, the bitter delicacy. The tzaddik who kills the Yetzirah, and if he's a complete tzaddik, transforms it to Kedusha. So that's sweet, that's beautiful by Hashem, you know. But here the Alter Rebbe asks the question, that's good as far as action goes. But why does the Bainani Neshama come into a body and an animal soul when it can never win that battle, it can never change the animal soul to Kedush. It can never kill it. So the Alter Rebbe is asking now, the creation of a Bainani in the body. And the Nisham, not as far as doing terms, that, that's fine. But why is the Nisham of a Bainani coming into the body of a, a person? of evil, you'll never be able to get, Benini, by definition, cannot become a tzaddik. That means the Benini can never push away the animal soul. He can't. He will never be able to get rid of it, to, get, to destroy it. That he shouldn't get to it. If you remember, we learned before by the Bainani, the Bainani gets foreign thoughts. He has an Avishabamis, it feeds him with evil thoughts, but he doesn't entertain them. If the Bainani would entertain them willingly, he'd be called a Rosh at that moment. But Dr. Rebbe proved from the Modest that if you willingly think a forbidden thought, then, then you're a Rosh. A Benini is never a Russian. I he has an Afshabam. So the Nefshabam is, is constantly pumping evil into him, but he constantly pushes it away. So after the time, you're fighting the battle, you're never going to get rid of the Nefshabam is that he shouldn't pump evil thoughts or evil actions or whatever. Because the essence of the animal soul. Shimei Akripa of Kripa by the Bainani, he betakfa ubegvurasa, isn't its strength and might, kitul dasa, as it was when it's born. In another place in Tanya, Dr. Rebbe said earlier, not only is it as strong as it is from birth, it's even stronger by the Bainani. Why? He ate more, he drank more, he slept more, he took care of physical things, that's even more. So Dr. Rebbe is asking, we need to understand what is the purpose of the Bainanese neshama coming into the body when there's no way in the world that the Bainani is going to be able to get rid of the nefshabamis, that it shouldn't feed him with this evil. Rahak, he says, the garments of thought, speech, and action by the Bainani, 
Ain't no mislabshim will go from canal. Don't affect the body. In other words, the Baini, when it comes into practicality, he doesn't think sin, he doesn't speak sin, and he doesn't do sin. But in essence, the, the Nefesh Abamis is there. So now a Bainini comes into the body, into the Nefesh Abamis, in the animal soul, for what purpose? To fight it, fight it, fight it, and never win. The Gemara tells us, Gemara says in Seif that one of the tortures of the slavery in Egypt was Pari made them build what's called Pisim and Ramses, you know, the two big cities over there that the Jews built. So the Gemara explains, why were they called peace and Menamses? Because when the Jews built the building, it was built on quicksand. So after they finished building the building, the building sunk back into the ground. You know, Mela, you, you're a slave, okay? And you build something. At least you feel a sense of accomplishment. I accomplished something. The Gemara says the severity of the slavery in Egypt was even what they built fell apart. That means they didn't even, they worked, 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 and it fell apart. That's torture. So the Rebbe is asking the same thing by the Bainini. A Bainini is working his whole life. Bim Kane, therefore, the Rebbe finishes the question. What is the purpose of the Bainini coming into this world? To work for no reason, okay? To fight constantly the whole life with the Yetzahara, and they're not going to be able to overcome. What in the world is the purpose of the Bainim? Fight, 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 and never win. So learn not. Don't come down into a body, don't fight, and don't win. You're not going to win anyway. So why fight? Why does Hashem send down the Nisham of the Bain? He says like this, the Tehiz Eis Nechomosam, this should be their comfort. The Nachman Bekeflayim Lekteshia, to comfort them doubly with help, the Sameach Libam Ba Hashem, that they should, hearts should be happy with Hashem, Hashem and Itam Beseich Teirotsim Vavidosim, in the level of godliness that rests upon them, in them, when they do terror mitzvahs. So Dr. Rebbe is now going to answer the question, to comfort the Benini, why in the world is the Benini coming into the world? Fight, 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 and not win. He says like this. The head, the Mloshen, the Yunuka, first introduce it. By the commenter of the Yunuka, there was a, was a kid in the Yuzayar, it was called the Yenuka. Yenuka means a baby. That kid was super holy, super great, and he said a lot of brilliant things. Okay? What is this? Some people say the Yenuka was Rav Amnuna Sava. Whatever. He said, what did he say? Posek on the Posek. The Zayar calls this Yenuka. The Posek says, HaChacham Einav Bereshi. The Chacham's eyes, the wise man's eyes, are in his head. So the Zayar asks, the Chiba'an asa inish de Banash, and where are the old, everybody else's eyes, not in the head? Shlema Melech is saying, the Chacham, his eyes are in the head. Meaning, what, what was the, and where's everybody else's eyes? Not in the head. So the Zayar says, this is all a quote to the Zayar now. Akroho chihu, this is what it means. Yitznan, it says in the mission like this, or we learned in the Zayar, a person is not allowed to walk four cubits with uh, uncovered hair. Like you need a yamukha. So it says in the Zayar, you're not allowed to walk four cubits without with uncovered hair. My time of what says in the Zayar, why? The shrin the sharia oration. The Shechina is resting on the head. Or, as the, that's the Zayar. But the Gemara says the reason is, uh, the Gemara tells the story of Rav Nachman's mother, the famous Rav Nachman of the Gemara, was told by his stargazers that your kid is going to be grow up to be a robber. 
a thief. So from the time he was a little baby, the Gemara says, his mother always made sure his head was covered, that he should have the fear of Hashem. And he grew up to be one of the greatest Tamaroim of the Gemara, of Nachman, who was one of the greatest Tamaroim of the Gemara. That's why, by the way, I know in Hebrew they call it kippah, kippah means a covering, but in Yiddish and came an English word already, it's called yarmulke. Why is this called a yarmulke? Because it's two words in Aramaic, yare malka, the fear of the king. When you say yare malka fast, it's yarmulke. But what's the, so the Zayar says, though, adds to it. Why do you need to cover your head? Because the Shekhin, it says, is resting on the head. Therefore, the Kat'in on Tamon. And therefore, be the wise man's eyes. The Vachad in Tamon, Linda, is to know that this fire of godliness that's resting on the person's head, I'll explain in a second. It's the Mishcha needs oil to keep it going. Okay, the Zara says like this. Why do you need to wear a keeper? Why do you need to wear a yamuka? Because the shin is resting on the head. So it says, and the Zara is explaining, what does it mean? The person's eyes, the chacham's eyes are in his head. Everybody's eyes are in the head. But what does it mean that the chacham's eyes are in the head? It means that he should realize what's on his head, the divine presence, which is a fire. And that fire needs fuel. And he says it. And this is all the expression of the Zayah. That Linda to know. That fire that's rest burning on his head. It's the Mishcha needs oil. And he says why. Began the gopha by Nash Eopsila. The person's body is like a wick. Right? Looks like a wick. And there's a fire on top of the wick. But in order to have a fire burning in the wick, you need to have oil. You need to have a fuel. So therefore, you have the body, which is the wick. There's the shechina resting on top of us, which is a Hashem Hashem is a consuming fire. So Shleim HaMelech is screaming. And he's saying, don't lack oil on your head because this the Pasuk in, in Kohelet and he says the fire of godliness that's on the head needs oil what is the oil Eden and Avdan Tovin, those are the good mitzvahs and the good deeds. And he says, Okay, so the Altarebbe quotes in Zayar that the Yenuka said, that the Yenuka, this kid, explained what was the purpose of the saying, Hashem says, the eyes of a Chacham are, are in his head. Of course, they're in the head, but his eyes are in the head. So he said, what it means is, it needs to realize what's on the head. And the Zara explains what it means. This is what the Yenuka said. The person's body is awake. The flame of Hashem, the fire of Hashem is on the head. And Shleim HaMalch is screaming in Kehelez, Shem and Aurish Chalyech, so don't be lacking the oil on the head, meaning don't forget to fuel the fire, to keep Hashem in on top of your head and therefore he said that's what it means and what is the oil good deeds mitzvahs, and he said that's what Shlomo Amalek says a chacham ain't of birayshay. his eyes are in what is in the head ain't of his eyes birayshay, is to realize what's on top of his head that is what, what it says, so you need to constantly be aware of this aspect that it needs. We find a similar thing, Siddhis explains. Carbonase 
are called, we say this in, in Kabbalah every day in Davening, twice a day, Shachos and Mincha, it's a Pasuk and Chumash. It says, we read it on the Shchedish Kriya. As Karbani Lachmi Leishai. My carbon, my bread. So Chesidus explains basic carbonus, but all mitzvahs for that matter, is the bread of Hashem. What does it mean, the bread of Hashem? We know in order to keep the neshama in the body physically, to keep us alive, we need to eat. If we don't eat, we die. What does the food do? The food keeps the neshama in the body. That's the way Hashem set it up, whatever. We don't eat for an extended period of time, chas shalom, we die. What does food do? Food keeps the, body, the, the soul in the body. The same thing, the Medri says, just like the soul permeates the body, Hashem permeates the world. That means, in order to keep Hashem, so to speak, revealed in the world, this is what he's saying here exactly also. In order to keep Hashem in the world, so to speak, we need to feed Hashem. What does feeding Hashem mean? You don't give him bread to eat. We give him the food to keep Hashem in the world. That's what he's saying over here from the Zayah. There's a fire of godliness, and he's going to explain that at great length now. There's a fire of godliness that's resting on top of the head. But it needs food, it needs fuel. So we need to do Torah Mitzvah, is the fuel, the oil, or the bread that keeps Hashem in the world. He says like this, Vinei, Beer Marshal Zeb, to explain this analogy that the Zayar gives. Shehim shall erd hashchina le'erd aner'd, that it likens the, the shechina to the light of a candle. And what does the marshal of the Zerah say? Shein amer v'neches b'psila. It can't hold, it doesn't hold on to the wick. Because if you have no oil, then the wick becomes burned quickly. What keeps the fire on the wick and not only that makes it give light, that's what you use. Meir v'nechat. It doesn't shine and it doesn't hold in the wick. Beli shaman without oil. It, the bottom line is oil is needed to keep the fire, not only keep it on the wick, but it needs to, to give light. And that's the only way it could do it. The kach ein ha-shechina sheir al guf adam. The same thing the Zayar is saying. The shechina, this fire of God. <clears throat> cannot rest on the body of a person, which is likened to a wig. That's why we look like a wig. You need mitzvahs. And now the Rebbe is going to say now, the neshama is not enough. Why, why isn't the neshama enough of oil? That's the fact that we have a neshama. Why isn't that enough of oil, of fuel, to keep Hashem in us? He says like this. <clears throat> it's not enough with the neshama. Which is actually a part of Hashem. That it should be a wick for the, the oil for the wick. Now the Rebbe says it's understood that the neshama itself cannot be the fuel for godliness. And Dr. Ebb is going to explain it. But before that, I want to explain in the different point, I mean, another aspect over here. We learned already in the past, there's a medrash that says, one medrash says seven things were there before the world, then another measure says two things before the world, meaning greater than the world. So in the measure that says there are two things before the world, one is Teira and one is Neshamas. Teira existed before the world, meaning it's greater than the world. Why did Teira exist before the world? Because 
<coughs> it says the expression in Zayar is Stakel Bered Aisa Ubara Alma. How did Hashem create the world? The Medrash uses the expression that Torah is the blueprints of the world. Torah is the blueprints of the world. Then Zayar says, Hashem looked into Torah, Hashem saw it. And Torah says, Vayer Malakim Yehi Ard. Hashem said, Yehi Ard, and light became created. In Torah, it says, Hashem looked into Torah, it says, like a contract, you look in the blueprints and you build accordingly. And Nishamas are greater than the world. Why? Because the Medrash says, Bami Nimlach, simply, it's very coarse, taking it simply. It says, Bami Nimlach simply means with who did God decide? In other words, simply means who did they have a board meeting with to create the world? The Nishmei Sam Shal Tzadikim, with the Nishamas of Tzadikim. So Chassidus explains Chas Rishon to say that. What it means is, Bami Nimlach, what purpose did Hashem create the world for Nishamas? <clears throat> then the Medrash continues. So Tur is before the world and Nishamas are before the world. Which one of the two are greater? So the Medrash continues and says, the fact that Teda says, Dabir al Yisrael, speak to the Yidden, if Torah says speak to the Jews, that means there's already Jews. Because Torah can't say speak to the Jews if Torah is before the Jews. And again, it doesn't mean before in time, it means greater. So therefore the Medrash says that the Shamas are even greater than Torah. So now the question is, Chassidus asks, and now Treb is alluding to it here, if the Nisham is greater than Torah and Mitzvahs, why do we need Torah and Mitzvahs down here? Why do we need Torah and Mitzvahs down here? We have a Nisham. It's even greater than Torah and Mitzvahs. So Chassidus explains that up there in the spiritual source, Nisham is greater than Sadiq, than Torah. Therefore, when there came the ego, we learned, and Meshe Ben was faced with a dilemma. Either Jews go or Teda goes. One of the two got to go. He didn't destroy the Jews. He broke Teda. Because Nishama said greater than Teda. Down here, though, down here, Teda is greater than Nishama. Because Nishama comes into a body. It could sin. It could become impure. Teda down here, the Gemara learns out, <clears throat> the Pasik says, Alei body Ka'esh, my words are like fire. The Gemara says, just like fire cannot become tummy, Tater can never become tummy. A person who's impure could learn Tater, touch Tater, Tater cannot become impure. And the Shama itself is greater than Tater. But once it comes into the body, it can become impure. If it becomes impure, Tater is greater than the Nishama down here. Down here, we need Mitzvahs to do it. We hear that the Rebbe is going to tackle it in a little bit differently. But the Rebbe is explaining down here, it's not enough to have a neshama as the fuel. We need to have Torah and Mitzvahs. What is he saying? We'll just start it because it's later. Kihine neshama is adam, the neshama of a person. Even at Sadiq Gomu, Ovid Hashem, who serves Hashem, the year of the other, the Tanugim, the highest level of love and fear, Afa became nevertheless, and a betele be Mitzias the Gamani. He is not bottled completely to become one with Hashem. Let me explain this for two minutes and then we'll continue next week. Mitzvah Shem. Dr. uses, not here, but Dr. uses an expression. Even a tzadik gamu that serves Hashem with love and fear is called yesh misha is. If a tzadik loves Hashem, it's still his existence. He loves Hashem. He doesn't become mamish one with Hashem because there's a he, the tzadik, that loves Hashem. Yesh misha is. So the tzaddik cannot, just because of his being a tzaddik, with a super holy neshama, with a very fine body, who loves Hashem, 
but he's not completely bottled to Hashem because he is something that loves Hashem. And therefore the tzaddik can become one with Hashem. But when you do a mitzvah, then you become mamish united with Hashem. And therefore, the, the shama is not enough of a fuel to keep Hashem because it's not you becoming one with Hashem. Oil, in order to burn, it has to become one with the oil or with the flame, I mean. It has to become one with the flame. If it doesn't become one with the flame, it's not going to be fuel. The oil becomes part of the flame. That's complete bitl. That the shama doesn't have that level of a flame. Okay, it's late to be continued. Everybody have a great rest of the week. Have a great Shabbos. Shem. Don't forget this Shabbos is your base Tammuz. Shem Monday night. Um, Parsha class, 8.30.